Meanwhile, German Foreign Minister Frank Walter Steinmeier is calling for another humanitarian pause in Aleppo, like the one that took place last week. Well, to discuss this in more detail, I'm now joined in the studio by German politician Willy Wimmer. Thanks so much, Mr. Wimmer, for joining us here on RT International in the studio. So what do you make of this humanitarian pause or the possibility of another humanitarian pause? Will it result in progress or not? I mean, given uh, the fact that uh, there is no pressure at all on the Western-backed uh, rebels to stop their shelling of civilian areas. I think it is um, vital and necessary to look for a relief for the humanitarian problems we, has, we have in, in Syria. And I think we should stop the killing as soon as possible. That is one thing we have to take into consideration. On the other uh, side, we should never forget who started the civil war in, in Syria. And when these uh, human rights organizations blame one country in particular, we should never forget that the United States, Great Britain, France, Saudi Arabia and Qatar, they created the civil war in Syria at all. I won't mention Israel because of the situation in the neighborhood, but when we complain about the human suffering in Syria, we have to take into consideration who started everything. And the interesting thing is, that everything the West is doing in Syria, it's against international law. They have no support of the Charter of the United Nations. Even what the German military is doing there is against our constitution and has no support of the uh, Charter of the United Nations. The only power who is in accordance to international law in Syria is the Russian Federation and um, because um, the actual president, who had been elected freely, asked for the support, it's um, in accordance to international law. We have to take this into consideration when it comes to accusations like Human Rights Watch and others. Well, uh, certainly the situation in uh, Syria at the moment is very complex, very volatile, and the people bear the brunt of it all. But um, amid such instability, there are calls to exclude Russia from the UN uh, Human Rights Council, with the High Commissioner for Human Rights going even further. Let's now take a listen. Our preference would still be that the permanent members of the Security Council voluntarily desist from using the veto when there's evidence of serious violations of international law. So what do you make of such uh, harsh rhetoric? It is uh, a signal that the United Nations is uh, on one side. It's uh, not free in its opinion. And we, we see it already since decades that the United Nations are playing a part and a game on the side of the United States. And therefore, I think we don't take it serious what United Nations representatives tell us. And, uh, you know, also last year, Saudi Arabia was elected uh, chair of a key panel on uh, the Human Rights Council, yet uh, its human rights record has been repeatedly criticized and uh, highly questionable. But let's take a quick look at why. Well, the, the images that we have just seen kind of speak for themselves. But um, also, there have been calls uh, for Saudi Arabia to be suspended from UN Human Rights Council. But do you think this will ever happen? Never because of the close relationship between Saudi Arabia, Israel and the United States. And therefore, I think they can do what they do without being punished for that. And I am actually against a competition, um, throw this uh, country out or throw this country out. I think we have to realize that um, who organized the civil war in Syria and um, who is in accordance to international law. I think beside of that, we have to find solutions. And um, it is a disastrous situation in Syria and uh, we have to take um, all measures to stop violence. When they had a truce between the United States and, uh, the, and the Russian Federation three weeks ago, what happened? The Americans killed 100 Syrian soldiers and uh, Russian soldiers as well. There is a development in Washington 
to make use of a situation where there is no newly elected American president. And this is a complex and extremely dangerous situation for the rest of the world. Well, uh, Mr. Wimmer, uh, thank you so much for this answer. Uh, I'd like you to stay in the studio because we'll be going back to you. That was German politician Willy Wimmer. And uh, we will take a short break right now. But as I've already said, we'll be back with Willy Wimmer uh, very shortly to discuss today's anti-terror raids across Germany where police warn of an imminent threat. But that's in just a couple of moments. So do stay with us. I think that the euro is it's severely undervalued. That's the highest output in over three years. What the Fed really wants is inflation. The U.S. has more than doubled imports from Iraq. All that debt that was accumulated, they have to pay it off. And when you see oil go down, our economy goes down. What do you make of that data, and what does it really mean for the average worker? Most people think to stand out in this business, you need to be the first one on top of the story or the person with the loudest voice or the biggest ratings. In truth, to stand out in the news business, you just need to ask the right questions and demand the right answers. Question more. Welcome back. You're watching RT International. Now, Britain has revealed it will start training so-called moderate opposition fighters in Syria again. Our London correspondent, Anastasia Turgina, has more. And a step that's uh, gathering some quite obvious controversy thanks to previous experiences, uh, British Defense Secretary Michael Fallon is announcing the country's decision to train these so-called moderate opposition forces in Syria in hopes of tackling ISIS yet again. We're stepping up our support to moderate opposition forces in Syria through training them in the skills they need to defeat Daesh. Well, the initial plans include sending just 20 military personnel for this operation, but this number is expected to grow, presumably in case of success. And this is where the big problem comes in, because, of course, all along the West has had major difficulty distinguishing between the moderate and uh, not so moderate opposition groups. There's no certainty that whoever they're training is not going to end up defecting and join, uh, joining ISIS, and there are no guarantees that weapons don't end up in the wrong hands. Despite Despite this, we're hearing the Ministry of Defense here in London saying they're going to carefully vet all the volunteer opposition trainees and teach them things such as international humanitarian law, among other things. But of course, th these big questions remain. We do know that in the past, this kind of program has essentially failed, where uh, the Pentagon had requested Britain to join a similar scheme. And just last year, that program wrap wrapped up uh, being nothing short of a fiasco. We're also supporting a moderate opposition in Syria that can help us in this effort, who stand up to the bankrupt ideology of violent extremism. Can you tell us what the total number of trained fighters remains? Uh, it's a small number, and uh, uh, the ones that are in the fight is, uh, is, is we're talking four, four or five. Let's not kid ourselves, that's a joke. We have to acknowledge this is a total failure. It's just a failure. This train and equip program has not, uh, frankly, uh, uh, lived up to uh, what we initially thought. The program hasn't lived up to expectations. That's an understatement, isn't it? German police are carrying out raids across the country in a large-scale operation in response to what national media are calling an imminent terror threat. Their prime targets, a group of uh, Russian nationals of Chechen origin suspected of uh, financing terrorist organizations. RT's Peter Oliver has more. 
Right, well, we understand that police have launched counter-terror raids across five different states all over Germany, from the top to the bottom, um, uh, and raided a number of apartments as well as um, communal accommodations. Now, the raids were based on information that we understand was linked to a serious act of violence against the state. Now, we're still waiting for official confirmation um, of any arrests that have been made. Uh, we understand that the target for this operation was a 28-year-old Russian national who originates from Chechnya. Um, there's also a further 10 men and three women also from the Chechen region of Russia, um, all of whom were asylum seekers. Now, it has been widely reported in the press that they were detained by the authorities. However, there's no official confirmation from the police just yet as to whom they have in custody. We'll be waiting from that a little bit later on. We do understand that all of those who have been or who were um, targeted in these raids were asylum seekers who were still waiting to have their asylum applications processed. But this isn't the, uh, the first major raid that we've seen in Germany this month. Earlier in October, there was a huge rain, raid in the city of Chemnitz in the, um, in the state of Saxony. Uh, the target there was uh, Jabba al-Bakir. Now, there's quite huge questions over the actions of the authorities in that raid. Um, I mean, Al-Bakir originally had been cleared by security services as uh, not being a terror risk back in 2015. He was then put back onto the watch list and they launched this raid against him. There was... Um, he wasn't picked up in the initial raid. There was then a two-day manhunt following that raid and shootout. He was eventually handed in by Syrian refugees. But al-Bakir later killed himself uh, while in police custody, all of which raised a lot of questions about how the operation was handled from planning right up until um, him being held in detention. We'll be waiting to find out if there's any official comment. Uh, since this took place in five states across Germany, we'll perhaps be hearing from Thomas de Maizier later on, the German interior minister, for more on what has happened. What we do know is that these raids have been launched across Germany uh, aiming to pick up uh, terrorist suspects. Well, we have in the studio German politician Willy Wimmer here and taking advantage of your presence here, I'd like to ask you now, what can authorities do to make people feel safer as, as we heard questions are being raised over how this uh, security uh, situation is being, operation has been handled? Yeah, we, we shouldn't be surprised because of that. Last year, the federal chancellor Angela Merkel made a decision to open up the borders. We have hundreds of thousands of people where we don't know who they are. They are living in, in our country. Mm -hmm. And that is the reason for all of that. The German population is ab upset about such a situation and it has nothing to do with uh, today's operation. It is a general issue. And I think Germany sooner or later will become very militarized because of uh, the failure of and the putsch against German law last year mm -hmm. when they opened the border. So certainly uh, the situation is uh, not very simple there, I would say very uh, volatile. And uh, um, it's also reported that raids are targeting asylum uh, seekers there. Do you think that is going to uh, further uh, inflame the anti-immigrant sentiment in the country? Uh, absolutely. But it is a sentiment against the government mm -hmm. also, because the government is responsible for the situation we have in these days. I never saw a German uh, government before which was not able to deal with our security. And therefore, it's, uh, the blame has to be on the government. OK. So uh, if you could just uh, briefly tell us what will be the way out of the situation? We um, have to take care of our own security. We have to protect our borders. We have to do it by police force. And then we have to get in control of everybody who is in our country. Because as long as we don't know who is there, we can't uh, deal with our security. All right, Mr. Wimmer, thanks so much for talking to us and uh, sharing your thoughts with here, uh, German politician Willy Wimmer with us in the studio. And up next